corner anywhere in the room today. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. If you brought a Bible with you, you can open with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4, and I want to share something uh, that the Lord really ministered to my heart that I, I believe is not just for me, but for the church and for your church. And uh, the title of this message is simply Brighter Days. Brighter Days. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, reading from the New King James Version, we'll read verses 18 and 19. Uh, the Lord says, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. One more time, verse 18. It says, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. One translation says, the full light of day. The full light of day. Uh, some time ago, uh, I, work, I woke up and first thing in the morning, I felt like the Holy Spirit was just talking to me. And I wish uh, that happened to me all the time, you know, and, but... I just felt like first thing in the morning, the Holy Spirit was just speaking real strongly to my heart. And the, word, the words were this, I'm not through with you. I'm not through, you, through with you. And it's not that I was going through a time where I thought the Lord was through with me or like my life is over or something like that. But it was an encouragement, I believe, from the Holy Spirit to, to me to stir my faith to believe what he has for me in the future. That no matter how good it has been in my past, God still has some wonderful things planned for my future. And so one of the things I like to declare and say, and we say at our church all the, all the time, is that our best, our blessed, and our brightest days are still to come. And according to this, this verse of scripture, here he says, the path of the just. Of course, as New Testament, New Covenant, New Creation believers, we understand that we are the just. We are the righteous. We are those who have been made right with God through what Jesus has done for us. And so in the light of that revelation, that truth, when you read a verse like this, when you read a passage like this, you realize that's talking about me. The road that I'm on, the path that I'm on, the steps that the Lord has for me, the ways that he has for me to take are like the, the shining sun that shines ever brighter, meaning I should believe for brighter days. I, I should believe that as my years go by, uh, go by and as decades go by in my life that it's not getting worse and worse and more disappointing and more disappointing and now I'm more discouraged about what the future may hold for me, but it's quite the opposite. Because of the goodness of God, because of the faithfulness of God, because of the promises of God, because of God's ability to see the end from the beginning and have things prepared ahead of time for me, I can wake up every single day of my life with confidence and declare and say, I believe God has some brighter days in store for me. And no matter how good it has been, it can get better. And no matter how hard it has been, the Lord's going to bring me out and bring me through through. Praise the Lord. And even if I'm going through the most challenging season of my life, he hasn't left me. He hasn't forsaken me. The Lord Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. And because of that, I have a hope. I have a confidence. Hallelujah. And that hope is an anchor for my soul. And so on this Sunday morning, October 22nd, 2023, I can confidently declare things are getting brighter for me. Things are working out for me. God's working all things together. I wish I had two or three people who believe what I'm talking about right now. That, look, I didn't just show up at church just to have a little feel good. I didn't just show up at church just to get a little lesson. But I showed up at church and my faith is being stirred. My faith is being quickened. I'm taking another step in the direction that the Lord has for my life. And it's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. Somebody shout brighter days. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Shout, brighter days. Hallelujah. Amen. If Jesus is the Lord of your life, if he is the author and the finisher of your faith, then he didn't just save you just to try to make you have a little bit of a decent life before you meet him in heaven. I mean, if you got saved when you're 17, then when you're 35, you ought to believe, man, God is still working in my life. The good work he has begun, he will complete. If you got saved when you're 25 and you're 85 in this room, you ought to believe, hallelujah, I'm still here on this planet for a reason. God has purpose for my life. 
He has destiny for me. There's some things he still called me to do, some things he still called me to say, some steps he still called me to take. There's some, there's some things he's placed within my heart, some fresh vision, some fresh life, some fresh dreams that I'm called to accomplish. It's getting brighter for me. Can I just tell you the same way the Lord told me? God's not through with you. God's not through with you. I said God's not through with you. There's a hope that should fill your soul. There's a confidence that should fill your soul every single day, no matter what is going on in the world. I, I literally just read this this morning, that China is, is sending like warships to Gaza in that area, that part of the world. Boy, we're living in some crazy times. There's a lot going on in our world. There's a lot going on in the Middle East. There's a lot going on in the United States. There's a lot going on in our world, in our country. But I, I got to believe that the God who began a good work is going to complete it. I I gotta believe that God hasn't forgotten about me, forgotten about you, forgotten about your family. I gotta believe that He's still the Alpha and the Omega. I still gotta believe that He's the beginning and the end. I still gotta believe that He never says, uh oh, that He's not surprised about what's going on in the world, but He has a plan. He has a purpose, He has a will, He has a way. And I want to be right in the middle of it. I want to be right in the middle of it, yielded to the fullness of what he has for me. Hallelujah. We know Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I, I know the thing. I know the, I know the plans that I have for you. These plans are to give you a future and to give you a, to give you a hope. In 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, talks about the Holy Spirit and how the Lord has things prepared I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I just got a real easy, simple question for you. How many of y'all really love the Lord in here? That's not everybody. Anybody else? You really love the Lord in here? All right. Amen. Well, then God has things prepared. The Amplified Bible says made and kept ready. Things prepared, made and kept kept ready. It's like the Lord still has stuff on the shelf. You know what I mean? Like he's still got things made and got them ready and he's just, just like prepared for you to step into those things. And I really believe every time we take a step of faith, every time we listen to the Holy Spirit and his direction and his guidance in our life and we take another step, we make another move, it's like we step into what God has prepared. And sometimes there's times where we weren't obedient or we didn't do what God said to do and it's almost like, we, you know, it's like we're it's like a revolving door. You know, it's like well, we're going through that again, doing that again, doing that again. And it's almost like the Lord is waiting for you to believe him, to take him at his word, waiting for you to take a step, waiting for you to move out in faith, waiting for you to get out of the boat, step onto the water. Come on. It's like the Lord is waiting. And the Lord's like, I got things made and I got things kept ready. And they're just, re they're cooking. You know what I mean? It's like, it's been in the crock pot for a while. It's just ready for you to just come on. Step up to the table. Come on. Believe God. Come on. Lift up your eyes. Come on. Lift up your head. Come on. Look under the one who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. Things would start looking up when you start looking up. Woo, that's good preaching for a young white guy. Hallelujah. Things that start looking up, when you start looking up, when you, you get your eyes off of all the, the issues and the storm and all the problems and all the commentary and all the things that are going on around you, and you look unto Jesus, you look unto his word, you look unto his promises, and those will be an anchor for you. It'll give you some hope. It'll give you some strength. It'll put something in you that I'm not just going to work and, you know, working a nine to five and putting in my hours. I'm not just raising kids and trying to survive. Survive it. I'm not just trying to pay a few more bills and not just trying to pay this, this car off so we can just try to get another one. I'm not just trying to make it through and I'm not just trying to survive. You know, the Lord said it to me this way. Amen. Well, that you need to move from survival mode to thrival mode. I know that's bad English. 
Oh, but it's good English too. You know what I'm saying? Like that's bad English. Oh, but that's good. Move from just, I'm just trying to survive. You know what I mean? To we're called to, we're called to overcome. We're called to conquer. We're called to move forward. We're called to do the works of Jesus. We're called to be salt. We're called to be light. We're called to move as the church, as the body of Christ. That's who we're called to be. Praise God. So it's not just survive until he comes back or survive until I go and see him. It's like, no, no, I'm moving forward. No, no, I'm taking steps of faith. The apostle Paul said it this way. This is the way he lived his life. One of my favorite passages of scripture is Philippians 3, 13 and 14. He said, I forget those things which are behind. And he kind of said it this way. I like the way he says it. He says, well, this one thing I do. And it's just like a preacher to say this one thing I do. And then he says more than one thing. This one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind and reach forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. He said, he actually gets three things. He said, I forget, amen. Listen, at times in your life, you got to know what, what needs to be forgotten. I know we don't forget the goodness of God or the promises of God, but there are some things that you need to forget and leave. I believe for some people in the room, that's like the, if there's nothing else, Nothing else that is the word of the Lord for you today, that's it. I'm going to drop that right there, and I'm going to move forward to the next thing that the Lord has for me. Forget those things which are behind, and I reach. I press. I'm reaching, and I'm pressing. I'm reaching forward to those things which are, which are ahead. One translation says, this is the Passion Bible. It says, I fasten my heart to the future. Oh, man. I fasten my heart to the future. 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 Instead of living back there, instead of living in yesterday, instead of living, li, li, uh, living in the good old days or the glory days, what if these get to be the good old days? What if these get to be the glory days? What if you get to be a part of a church and you're like, I was there before they launched another campus. I was there when they were in the other side of this building. I was there and I, we believed God together and we gave together. We prayed together. We fasted together. We moved forward together. We did outreaches together. We, come on, we had fall festival together. Like we, I've, been, I've been there through thick and through thin and I've seen the faithfulness of God. Can can I have a witness from anybody that's, that's been around for longer than a month or two? You know what I'm saying? Long, nothing wrong with just getting here, but I'm saying anybody been alive long enough to see the faithfulness of God? Anybody been alive long enough to see and to prove God faithful that what he said he will do? Hallelujah. Sometimes I like talking to some of the older folks, the older saints. They've been around long enough to see God be faithful in the 20s or 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and maybe even in the 80s still say, I still believe God's got more around the corner for me. Praise the Lord. One minister by the name of uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, he was asked in his 80s, what were the best years of your life? His response was, I have not lived them yet. Uh, come on, that's the kind of attitude. Come on, if you're 35 and you're like, well, I'm getting old. Life's passing me by. Come on, that's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong mindset. I'm 46 years young. More vibrant than ever. Better looking than that guy in that other picture that Aaron Cody was showing. Much better looking. Definitely smarter. Definitely richer, too. Praise God. There's a lot of good things. <laughs> Amen. But 46 is not my best days. I'm living some good ones, but there's some brighter days the Lord has for me. There's some things that I'm doing, some steps that I'm taking. Come on, and you should be the same. There's some things that you're doing now, some seeds that you're sowing now, seeds financially, but seeds of prayer and seeds in the word of God, seeds where it's like, man, oh, God has a harvest for me. I just got to stick around long enough to see it come to pass in my life. God is cooking up some good stuff in my life. Come on, in Louisiana, we make gumbo. Come on. And the best kind of gumbo is not the microwave kind. It's the kind of somebody been cooking in the kitchen for a while. Somebody sliced up the potatoes. and Come on, somebody been cutting the celery. and Someone sliced up the sausage. and You know what I'm saying? They've been cooking for it. And that's how our God is. Hallelujah. He's always been. Hallelujah. He existed before you ever showed up. Amen. He is Jehovah. 
Jireh, the God who sees, the God who's seen ahead, the God who sees to it, the God who's seen around the corner, the God who's seen around the bend and knows exactly what's coming and what you need and what steps you're going to need to take. The Lord knows all of that. And if you'll pay attention and just be in tune and in step with him, the provision will be there. The help will be there. Strength will be there. Direction will be there. Amen. The people will be there. The people will be there. Brighter days. Somebody shout brighter days. Brighter days. Amen. I was, amen. I like the sound of that. Praise God. I was in Target uh, some time ago, and sometime last year, I believe. I was in Target, and uh, I was at the checkout line. And I uh, get to the checkout line, and there's a guy there, and he's, you know, uh, just a young guy. Looks look like maybe 18, 19 years old. And he's working, and he's got a little name tag there, you know. And so I put my stuff on the, the conveyor belt or whatever, and it's going there. He's doing his business. And I look, and I see his name tag, and his name is Psalm, P-S-A-L-M. And, you know, I'm a preacher, you know. So I'm like, I can't let this go. We're just not letting this roll, you know what I mean? Like, I need to, well, I got to say something about this. I'm like, bro. As if this has never happened in his life before. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it's your name, it's your name. Like, I get this all the time. My name's Aaron. They're like, ooh, a -A Ron. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, I never heard that one before. Oh, my wife's name's Aaron. You, did you know that you and your wife have the same name? Like, yes, we've been married for 23 years. It's like, we, we do it the same. It's awesome. So I come up to this guy, and I said, bro, your name is Psalm. <laughs> he said, I know. I'm like, what a great name. I'm like, that is the cool, I mean, well, I've never met anyone in my life, and maybe y'all have, and I, but I never had, I still haven't since. I've never met anybody named Psalm. I'm like, and so again, preacher mode, do you know that is a book of the Bible? He goes, yes, I do know, which it's obvious, right? If he, he knows anything about it anyway, he's in, he's, we're in Louisiana, you know, it's like Southern Bible Belt culture stuff, you know, so I'm like, he said, yeah. I said, so tell me, you got to tell me what your favorite psalm is. And I'm kind of excited, kind of expecting something. I'm like, he's going to say something. He said, I don't have one. I said, you got to be kidding me, man. Your name is Psalm. There's 150 of them in the Bible. You got to have one verse that you like. You got to have one verse that's got to be one. He said, no, I don't have one. I said, well, that's okay, because I'm going to give you one. <laughs> Again, preacher mode. How about just Christian mode? How about that? Just Christian mode. I'm just being a Christian, right? I'm like, all right. I said, I'll give you one. Psalm 27, 13. You know what it says? He said, no. I don't know what it says. It says, the psalmist David, and he said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted, I would have quit, I would have given up, I would have passed out. If I, if I hadn't believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I said, you like that one? He said, I do like that one. I said, you can go back home, write it down, look it up. It's a good verse of scripture. Psalm 27, 13. Amen. I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see. And I think this next part is pretty key. The goodness of the Lord. And the, the location that he's talking about. In the land of the living. Or can I ask y'all a question? How many of y'all in the land of the living? I know some of y'all aren't. It's okay. <laughs> well, you realize it or not, you are. You're in the land of the living. You're in, what's the address of this church? 1901 South Poinsetta. Pointietta. Point, Pointiana. I don't know. I'm struggling. This big time struggle. Big time struggle. Right here <clears throat> in Kissimmee. <laughs> Are we in Kissimmee? Okay, we got that. Right here in Kissimmee, right here in Central Florida. I can say that one really good. Right here in this land of the living where you live, your community, your street, your house, your address, your family, your people, your friends, your kids, your grandkids, right there in that place, those people. Listen, if David could say that all those years ago, 
all those years ago. And he was a man after God's own heart. We know that. There's a lot of great things about David. But as the children of God today, as the people of God, new creations in Christ Jesus, loved by the Father God, born of his spirit, filled with his spirit, given his word and his promises, living in a wonderful dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Oh, man, how much more as the church. Are y'all with me? How much more as the people of God? How much more should we believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Too many times, even Christians, believers, even people like, like you in a great church like this, and you know a lot of the word, got great promises, too many times we can wake up on a Monday and go, well, here we go. It's Monday again. Hate Monday. Got a whole week of work. Got bills to pay. Got stuff to do. We spent too much money over the weekend. We got all this kind of stuff. We got a busy. We got all kind of. We got the kids got to be in 10 places at the same time. I don't know well, how we're going to do that. I got all these things going on in my life. And just wake up. And instead of an expectation of the goodness of God, it's like, I don't even want to live this week. You know, can I skip five days? Can I skip six days? No, no. Then that's the wrong kind of way to live. That's the wrong mindset. That's the wrong expectation. Amen. You know what the Lord says about his people? This is what he says. Happy are the people. Whose God is the Lord? You know what else God said? Serve me with gladness. Serve me with gladness. Sounds to me like there's a, a, a joy and an expectation and a hope and something on the inside of, of the believer, of the people of God that should be instilled in us that we don't wake up with, on a Monday and like, well, here we go. We wake up on a Monday and go, here we go. You know what I mean? We don't wake up on Monday and go, oh, here we go again. Yeah. We, get, we wake up on a Monday and go, let's go. Yeah. Let's roll. It's, this is it. Yeah. This is it. I tell people all the time, people come see me, they're like, oh, it's Monday. And I'm like, I love Monday. <laughs> what a great day to be alive. What a great day to serve the Lord. What a great day. Come on. It's going to be a great week. Opportunity awaits this week. Come on, steps and progress can be made this week. The goodness of God can be tasted and seen and experienced this week. I'm believing, I believe I'm going to get some of that. I believe I'm going to enjoy some of that. I believe I'm going to walk into some of that. I believe the gumbo the Lord's been cooking. The gumbo is for me. <laughs> Woo! Brighter days. Brighter days. Amen. I've learned this. Just because you believe for brighter days doesn't mean you don't have some challenging ones. <laughs> There's challenging days. I know that. There's challenging seasons. I know that. But you kind of got to be like the Apostle Paul who said, you know what? I believe God. It shall be as he told me. Amen. Amen. Middle of a storm. Middle, I mean, right in the middle of it. I believe God. Actually, he said it this way. Take courage. I believe God. And then he says it again. Take courage. Two times he says it. Amen. That lets you know what needs to happen. Like sometimes you need to look at yourself in the mirror and go, bro, get it together. Take courage. Don't walk out of here with that look on your face. Come on. Get in prayer. Get in the word. Study the problem. Come on, get it. Start speaking the word and look at yourself and go, all right, that's my, that's Aaron, you're going to have a good day today. You're going to be salt. You're going to be light. You're going to help people. You're going to reach people. You're going to minister to people. You're going to serve the Lord. God's going to show up in your life. All of God's promises are yes and amen to you. The Lord will supply all you need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. The scripture says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Like sometimes you don't, you don't need like, and it's nice to have friends, good to have church family, but sometimes nobody's around. you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. <laughs> encourage yourself in the Lord. Look at yourself in the mirror and go, you believe God. You're going to make it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You'll come through on the other side with a witness of the goodness of God and a testimony of his faithfulness. You're not, just, you're not going to die in the middle of it. You're going to make it through it. What's it say in Isaiah when you go through the, the fire and the flood? And all, isn't that what it says? When you go through it. One time the Lord said it to me. He's like, Aaron, you're going through it. 
Focus on me. I'm the one who'll bring you through. So instead of being focused on the wind and the storm and the fire, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on the finisher. I'm focused on the one who can finish what he started in my life. I'm focused on him, so I'm not focused on all this mess. I'm focused on the one who's bringing me through. And I know I'm going through stuff. I know sometimes it's hard. I know what circumstances may look like. I'm not living like with my head, you know, in the sand, like in a hole somewhere. Like, I don't know what's going on. I know what's going on in the world. I know what's going on in my family. I know it, but I believe God. I believe God. Whoo! Hallelujah. Amen. There was a time in Jesus' life and ministry here on the earth where there was a a ruler, a leader, synagogue came up to him by the name of Jairus. He comes up to him and asks him to come uh, come to his house because his daughter is sick. And so Jesus in the middle of this, in Mark Mark chapter 5, Jesus in the middle of this, there's a story that we know that's a really well-known story, and rightfully so, uh, about the woman with the issue of blood, had the issue of blood for 12 years. So that, that story happens right in the middle of Jairus asking Jesus for help. So after the woman with the issue of blood, you know, we, and we love that, and it's amazing. She reaches out, and she touches him with his garment. She receives the anointing and gets healed and all that. Then after, after all that, Jairus is still standing there. If you can imagine Jairus, if you were that guy, you'd be like, can we wrap this up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we need to get to the house. I have a 12-year-old daughter. Like, she is deathly sick like we got to get to the house Jesus don't you know you know we got stuff that you know this is important this is important and so while while that's all going on after that kind does kind of wrap up Jairus has some people come up to him and tell him like look don't bother Jesus you know it's too late it's too late and Jesus and I love this because it doesn't seem like the ones who are delivering the message to Jairus were really talking to Jesus they're, it seems like they're talking to Jairus. You know, it's, it's directed that way. But apparently Jesus is listening. I mean, the Lord's always paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, he's listening. He hears what's being said. And he doesn't, he doesn't even respond to the people who said what they said. He turns to Jairus says, don't be afraid. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. In that moment, it was so important for him, for Jairus to go, I got to stay in faith right here. I got to stay in faith. Looks really bad. Sounds really bad. And I know what's been said. But we're still going to the house. We're still going to the house. They get to the house and all kind of crying and weeping and wailing, all that kind of stuff. And Jesus does something that's probably not, you know, that popular in the moment. And it wouldn't be that popular right here, right now, if this was going on in your family. Jesus is like, everybody out. You know, if you got family or loved ones and someone's in the hospital, you know, it's tough if somebody comes in and is like, all y'all leave. Hey, that's my aunt. That's my uncle. That's my cousin. That's my nephew. And it was like, no, everybody out the house. You're whining. You, you know, Jesus like, everybody out. We just need faith in the room right now. And that little girl's raised up, 12 years old. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Besides Jesus being the Lord of your life, being the most crucial and important key to you seeing brighter days, which getting saved has got to be like, whoo, right there, right? Believing God for them would be right next. I believe God. That's, that's just faith, really. I have faith to believe, to see the goodness of the Lord in my life. I have faith to believe, to see the goodness of the Lord. And if I don't have everything figured out, If I don't have all the answers to all of the issues, I got this. I believe God. I believe God. You can stand up in the middle of a craziest storm of your life and believe God right in the middle of it. I believe God. Amen. I'm going to finish with this, and then I'm going to do something. Uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah were pretty old and wanting a child. And 
And uh, when the message was delivered to Sarah about her having a baby, you know, and she's pretty up there in age, she laughed, you know. And so the Lord uh, addresses it with Abraham in Genesis 18. Addresses it with Abraham. He said, you know, does Sarah laugh, you know? <laughs> And then the Lord, and I love this about God. He's so, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's cool to me. But the Lord asked Abraham this question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Now, this is funny to me for a few reasons. One, God is saying this. And he's asking this question about himself <laughs> right now if you read it in context you see it now for years I thought well that's what Abraham said that or Sarah said that or somebody else said that you know what I mean? Is anything too hard for the Lord you know I've heard a preacher say that yeah amen no nothing's too hard for the Lord but it, it wasn't it was God who said it God's endeavoring to get Abraham and Sarah to believe and say and know Nothing is too hard for the Lord. And if you can get to the place where you are fully persuaded and fully convinced, all right, we're facing this, but nothing is too hard for the Lord. Is there anything too hard? No, nope, nothing's too hard for the Lord. Do you believe it? Yeah, I believe that. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Do you believe that? Are you sure? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Do you believe that? D really? Yes. Is there anything? No, I mean the anything, and the anything that I'm talking about is the thing you're thinking about. <laughs> that thing. <laughs> That's the thing. Anything like, oh, well, no. No, Lord, you can do anything but change my husband. I know that. <laughs> you can do anything, but that bill's big. You know what I'm saying? You can do anything but that physical or that health issue. Now, that's been in my family for generations. That can't change, you know? You can do anything, but, you know, it just runs in my family. Marriage just don't work in our family. You can do anything, but my kid has lost his mind. You know what I mean? Like, he was good when he was little. Now, he's a teenager. Now, he like, acts like the devil. You know what I mean? It's just insane. Is there anything too hard? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. Do you believe it? Yes. <laughs> The simplicity of that faith is actually a game changer. It really is. It really is. And, and not just in church. Boy, and it's good to be here to get it. It's good to be here to be in a corporate atmosphere where it's like you can feel the room getting filled up with faith. But I'm telling you, on a Monday, on that Monday, is there anything too hard for the Lord? We have this metal like sign on our, what would you call it, a sign? I mean, on our it's like a plaque more than anything, but, it, you know, it's maybe two by two, you know, two foot by two foot. And it was a gift to us. And it just says on it, and it's right in our, our kitchen slash living room, you know, it says, is there, it says, there will be miracles. Yeah. There will be miracles. And I just like having that where I get to see it all the time. You know, just you're like, hey, man, well, maybe something tough, maybe something difficult. And right in the middle, you know, you can look at your bills on the kitchen table, you know, whatever it is. You look at it all the there will be miracles. You know what I mean? You're on the phone with the doctor, you know, like, there will be miracles. You know what I mean? You get in an argument with your, with your kids or with your spouse, like, look at, there will be miracles. <laughs> it's like you open the fridge and there's nothing there, and you're like, oh, God. There will be miracles. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Believing for the brighter days. That the Lord has in store. So for this, this house, I was this church here, the Lord re reminded me of a passage, and I, I didn't look it up, so maybe somebody can look it up and tell me where it's found. I know it's in the Old Testament. Um, but it says, uh, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house. What's that? Haggai 2.9. I think there's a, maybe the message or one of those is really good, but the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. And I believe that for this house. Boy, the Lord has, has brought this church uh, uh, a long way and been so good and been faithful 
you know, the first time we came to preach here, I don't think there was, there was no AC when we were here, you know, so there was no AC. I think that preacher just showed up for a check. No, I showed up when it was hot. <laughs> it was hot in summer, and it, I think there was leaks in the building. I don't know. There's all kind of blessing going on, all kind of blessing. Anybody remember those kind of days? You're like, oh, yeah, praise God. We put bucket over here and a bucket over there, fans on the way in, you know, whatever you got to do to make that work. <laughs> Amen. But the Lord's been good, and not just with air conditioning. And, you know, a nice roof, you know, with growth, with increase, with influence, with anointing, with, amen, placement by God. But it's just not done, you know. That's the thing. And that's what you have to know when you're part of a church and you're following pastors and leadership and that sort of thing. You're just like, well, you know, I just come hear the word. I make it, you know, maybe two out of four Sundays. Got to work some, go to ball games some. You know, everybody kind of does a little thing and don't realize there's a weight that needs to be carried spiritually for the vision to move forward. Be part of the ones who carry that weight spiritually and financially. Be part of the ones who carry that because there's a glory that the Lord has on the other side of it. Amen. And sometimes the, the instruction that the Lord has given us, I, um, I've kind of thought about it as our, for our church. And there's been times where it's like, well, it may look like we're doing this just to try to be somebody or try to, re, you, know, you know, look like we got more. Or we're doing something special. But, but the Lord's had to correct me a number of times and, and really help me understand it's about what's on the other side of that step. It's about what's on, what's on the other side of that step. People getting saved. People being reached. What's your words? What's your three words? People encountering the presence of God, encountering Jesus, getting right with God. People experiencing the love of God. People growing up into who they're called to be. Marriages being restored. I mean, all the goodness of God. Amen. That's on the other side of that. Praise God. Amen. So I want, I want us to do this, and uh, this will be the last thing I do, and then I'll turn it back to you pastors. Would you stretch your hands towards your pastors? And uh, it's Pastor Appreciation Month, you know. And I know you love them, and I know you'll have something special next Sunday, and I don't know what it is, but I just want you to stretch your hands toward them, and we're just going to pray God's best for them. Amen. Lord, I thank you for Pastors Kenneth and Lynette. We thank you for this house. We thank you for the vision you called them to run with. I thank you, Lord, as they wait with expectation and looking unto you. I thank you, Lord, that you give them a strength, a fresh wind in their sails, a help from the Holy Spirit that brings clarity, that gives hope, that gives joy concerning the future and the days that are ahead. Lord, they are and we are thankful for your faithfulness in our life and in the life of this, this church and in their lives. But Lord, we hold fast to your promises. We hold fast to our confession of faith in your promises. That the good work you have begun, we are confident you will complete. That you have a flourishing finish in mind. So I thank you, Lord, as good it is, as it has been, the seeds that have been sown and are being sown will produce a glorious harvest, harvest of souls and harvest of increase and expansion. And Lord, may you be glorified in all of it. Lord Jesus, may you be glorified in all of it. Holy Spirit, May room be made for you to do and flow how you want to move and flow in and through this house. And the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord will be seen. And the glory of this latter house in the next season will be greater than what's been seen up to now. We thank you for it. And we thank you for them and call them blessed. In the name of Jesus. Can we just lift our hands? Thank the Lord for his word. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for all the things that you said and you've done and all the promises that you've made. Hallelujah. 
If y'all would allow me, can I just do one more thing? Um, with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're in the room and you say, Pastor, when you were talking about brighter days and believing for them, I've been right in the middle of something, right in the middle of stuff, and I know that word was for me. And I just want to join my faith with you, even though I really, I've been with you all, all day. But raise your hand if you say, that's me. Maybe you're facing an impossible situation. You go, that's too hard. That seems too hard. And for man it is, or maybe for you it is, but it's not for God. Just lift your hand up. Lord, we bring that. You might take a moment and just say that. Lord, I'm bringing this to you, this situation. And I, I need and believe that your help is more than enough for me. Your strength is more than enough for me. Your provision is more than enough for me. So, Lord, I join my faith with the faith of this house and the faith of those whose hands are lifted. Even in this moment, as their hands are lifted and putting their faith in you, there's a casting of care. There's a casting of anxiety and worry that's just right off the shoulders, right up to right now. There's people going to leave here lighter, going to leave here freer, going to leave here better because they've casted their care on you, but they also have confidence in what your ability is in their life. Lord, we call you faithful. And we count you faithful. You'll do what you said you would do. So, Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus over every individual, every situation, every family. Lord, you give them good counsel by your spirit. In their prayer times, may there be understanding and light that comes on that brings answers to situations and circumstances that gives them steps to take. And may the word of the Lord that they may have received even up to this point before church, things you've already told them, may that word be stirred and revived once again in their spirit to believe you, dreams that you've given them, things that you've shown them, business endeavors you've put in their heart, dreams and even vision for their home and their family that seems so far off that didn't seem like it's possible. Lord, I thank you that you, you're breathing fresh life and hope in them concerning the future of it. I thank you for it, Lord. We'll be obedient. We'll be obedient in the steps that you give us to take and we'll be faithful to give you the glory and the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I love you. Call you blessed. Love you.